Well, Project Baseline was set up in around 2009 by Global Underwater Explorers. The idea was to encourage divers to visit their favourite dive sites, and that could be a cave, a wreck or a piece of coastline, and to start to record what they saw there. The plan is to photograph, to video and to survey these sites to give a gauge of what those sites look like today, a baseline. And this will give future generations of divers a means of measuring how this environment has changed. Divers can record sea life surveys. They can monitor changes in visibility, degradation of the wrecks, and you can even take water samples. These measurements that you take today can provide valuable data which can go on to help protect these sites in the future. Well, Paul Thorogoff is one of my favourite UK caves and it's a great dive site. It's in South Wales, which is a couple of hours from home, so I try and visit as often as I can and dive when the weather conditions are favourable. A few years ago, I spent the summer relining the main passage and the cave is quite prone to flooding, so the line is easily damaged. As I was replacing the line, I started to notice some interesting wildlife, such as albino trout. Some of them were in some sort of transition between normal and rainbow trout to becoming completely white in colour. When Project Baseline was first unveiled, I thought Porthrogoff was a perfect candidate. It's a beautiful cave and the river water which feeds the cave is vulnerable to surface pollution and other rubbish. So I thought it was important to begin recording the life in this cave. We have also been surveying to Grade 3, which is a long-term project to completely resurvey the underwater sections of the cave. The Brecon Beacons is a national park. It's in a rural part of South Wales and sheep farming, mining and tourism have all helped shape the landscape to how we see it today. The River Methler is Welsh for lightning. It gets its name from the speed at which the river levels rise and fall in wet weather. Just downstream from the cave are some impressive waterfalls which are spectacular in full flood. The water which feeds the River Methler begins its journey at Istrafeltha Reservoir and travels downwards towards the village of Istrafeltha itself. Directly opposite Istrafeltha Church, the whole river sinks underground in dry weather. These sinkholes are called church sinks. In 1964, fluorescein dye was put into the sinks and it reappeared at one of the many entrances to the caves a short two and a quarter hours later. The distance between church sinks and tradesmen's entrance has been calculated at 900 metres in a straight line. Porthrogoff is Welsh and it's best translated as Cateway to the Cave. It has 15 different entrances and the main entrance is the largest in Wales. It's 17 metres wide and 5 metres high. Tourists visit the cave all year round and it's very popular in the summer months with school and outdoor groups. It is possible for cavers to enter in the main entrance and walk and swim 295 metres through to the resurgence where the river emerges into daylight again. The resurgence pool is deep, cold and has strong undercurrents. It's claimed several lives. It should only really be attempted in the driest of weather and wearing a wetsuit. Some of the other entrances can be found upstream of the main cave, but these can only be reached in dry weather. The river in moderate to high flood is impassable and can be very dangerous. Cumbran entrance was found and dug out by Cumbran Caving Club and connects with the underwater sections of the cave. The top entrance is the furthest upstream. It's in the riverbank and the dotted line here shows the flood levels, making it impassable in wet weather. It's possible to dive directly into the upper series of the cave by entering this small chamber and wriggling backwards down the tight, narrow underwater slope. Divers usually start at the tradesman's entrance, which is a few hundred metres upstream of the main cave and set back from the river. It can still flood though, and in conditions like this, diving is definitely off limits. Side mount diving is standard for UK caves, and Porthrogoff is no exception. Dry suits are fine for the diving sections, but in order to explore the dry cave beyond, thick wetsuits are more appropriate. The climb down to the water is short but unstable and requires a lot of care. There's really only space in the entrance for one diver to kit up at a time, so the logistics of filming here need to be very carefully planned. In the summer, the water temperature rises as high as 14 degrees, 
However, in the winter months, it can drop down to uh, as, as low as four degrees centigrade. And the reason for this is because the water spends a very short period of time underground. Basically, it's a very close reflection of surface temperatures. The best way to get into this cave is actually to reverse down the boulder slope. And once you're into the main passageway, you can turn around and find the main line there. You find there's always a mild flow in this cave, even when the water levels are low. Actually, it's nothing like something you'd experience in maybe Florida, but actually much, much higher than you typically find in a British cave. Visibility in Porthirogov is, is about average for a UK cave. Um, normally, you'll find about three to four meters. What you also find is the longer the period of dry weather has been, the better the visibility is. It's a pretty shallow cave, and we've laid a nice thick line through it and it helps to protect this from the floods that tend to happen over winter. It's an active cave, it's a phreatic cave, and there's lovely scalloping all the way through it, all on the walls, and indicate the water direction and flow. The cave surfaces in several air bells as it continues upstream, and it leads to some good looking cave passages beyond further, tighter upstream sumps as well. Our long-term goal in this cave is to continue to resurvey the underwater passage to continue to reline where necessary, particularly after the winter storms, and also to survey upper cave water chamber. Unfortunately, the original survey data in this area has been lost. We've made a commitment to visit this site at least once a year. We'd like to make far more frequent recordings than this, um, so we've started to expand the team to include some newer cave divers. It's really good to get these guys involved in project work as well. We do plan to monitor visibility as well, um, but principally we're going to be taking a photograph of exactly the same underwater site which is at Cumbran Junction and we're also going to count the, uh, the number of trout that we see and try to photograph them as well. Another one of our sites is Little Neath River Cave which is in the next valley over and this is really a long-term project for us. This sump's also home to some albino trout, just like in Porthirogov, but we've also noticed some sporadic pollution in this cave as well. A really interesting development, particularly with this cave, is that we're now being supported by the Environment Agency to take water samples from the river water. Project Baseline is really great for anybody to get involved in project work. If you've got enough enthusiasm and motivation, you can get involved with setting up your own project, or just contributing to somebody else's. GUE provides a lot of support for uh, Project Baseline and the team, and they will help you set up the project and get you on your way.